Hi, I'm Tommy, and today we're having a look at the Nanlite Mix Panel 150, a full color RGBWW panel intended for filmmakers. The most interesting thing about the Mix Panel, in my opinion, is that with a button press, it goes from a hard soft panel, much like what we've experienced with the Titan X1, into a soft panel, but it does it in a very different way. First, let's talk about the price. The mix panel comes in itself at $879 on sale from $1,000. They sell an additional softbox for $79. If you want to invest in some batteries, you can get 26 volt VMAP batteries, which Nanlite also offers. I have their 230 watt hour 26 volt battery, and that one costs $449. And if you want to charge that battery, you can pick up their dual 26 volt VMAP charger for $309. All in, the kit that I have is $1,716. If you don't need battery power, you can get lit for $958 if you just get the softbox, and if you don't even get the softbox, that's $879. Personally, I like to use VMAP batteries everywhere possible because I hate to deal with wires and cable management. I always think that's more time consuming. Nanlite sent me this kit to review, just like all the other companies that have sent me lights to review. My financial livelihood doesn't depend on this video doing well, and I wasn't paid any money for producing it. No one had any input on what I'm saying in this video except for myself. We're gonna start this review at the one-click diffusion. It's not electronic diffusion like what we found on the Titan X1. The Rotolite Titan has this beautiful electronic glass on the front of the fixture that charges electrically to provide a precise level of diffusion across the entire panel. And that fixture has a standard price of $4,000. The mix panel, on the other hand, achieves what you need in terms of local diffusion with much less technologically expensive methods, but an equally clever design. The glass in front of the panel is beaded, so when light shines directly through the back of it, it goes straight through and provides a nice spotty intense light. But when you tap the CCT button on the back, the back lights turn off and it goes into an edge lit mode. The lights around the perimeter turn on and the light shines into the beads and those beads distribute the light perfectly diffused at 180 degrees and it turns into an edge lit panel. There are two considerations here. The light is either entirely diffused or not diffused at all and it only works in CCT mode. Also, the green and magenta shift only use the rear LEDs even in diffused mode. So it creates an intense spotty color when you're trying to do the green and magenta shift in soft mode. But that shouldn't be a problem because the green and magenta shift is largely unusable in my opinion anyways. It's like the intensity selector is on a different dimming curve than the rest of the fixture. So when you have the light at a very low intensity, say 5%, and you just go one green or one red point shift out of 50, the entire image is washed with green or red. And that's also true for the non-diffused mode. The barn doors work really well as far as barn doors on panels go. They're made of a really lightweight metal, probably aluminum, and they have this textured black finish, which is really nice. They aren't loud when banging around, and they're fairly durable, so they seem like they'll last a long time. You can remove them if you want to, but there's also a safety chain that you can attach in case, uh, you know, in case they come loose and you want to protect your actors. The softbox is a bit of a necessity if you want to use the full color modes to create soft light, as we've already discussed. The diffused mode doesn't work with the full color LEDs. The softbox also comes with a grid, which, even though the panel has a hard and a soft mode, the softbox with the grid is really how you're going to get directional soft output out of this light, and so I highly recommend you get the softbox. The build quality is probably one of my favorite things about the Nanlite Mix Panel 150. The backing is made of what looks like carbon fiber. It looks great, feels very solid. There's some high quality plastics and a matte texturized finish on the metals. The materials are something that seem to be a chosen above budget for what you're paying for this panel. It's extremely lightweight, feels very solid, has a very thin form factor, and it's the perfect light for rigging overhead. I don't really care for the two soft knobs on the back though. Uh, I think that the arrows on these dials don't really make a whole lot of sense. They're free spinning knobs that speed up or slow down based on how fast you turn them. But if you turn them too fast, they don't respond at all. It's difficult to dial in the exact numbers you want for anything very quickly, and at varying speeds, the arrows will never mean the same thing pointing in the same directions at any two different times. I much prefer this knob on the right, which has obvious detents, and one click corresponds to one value. I would like to see all three knobs of that design on like a version two of this panel. Fortunately, you can quickly navigate through the different color options in HSI mode by tapping on the knobs and tapping the intensity knob turns it on and off. The case it comes with is very thin and lightweight, just like the fixture. If you had a van and space was at a premium, you could fit a lot more of these than any of the other panels that I've dealt with. 
The case is a soft case, but it does a good job at protecting your equipment. The light also has fans built in for cooling, but it also has a silent mode. You'll get the quietest operation in silent mode, which is where I usually operate at, and the most output as well as the loudest output in boost mode. But let me tell you, this thing gets really bright. Also, now would be a good time to hit that like button. In silent mode, with the edge lit mode enabled, you'll get about 1,250 lux at one meter away. Push that into boost mode and you'll get roughly 2,500 lux. If you turn off the soft light mode and you go into hard mode, and silent operation, you'll get 8,000 lux at one meter away, and then again, go into boost mode and you'll double the output up to 16,000 lux. Normal mode, where the fan is only slightly quieter than in boost mode, it'll put you right in the middle at about 12,000 lux. For full color output, which doesn't have an edge lit mode, it puts out 2,500 lux at one meter in silent mode and 4,000 lux in boost mode using just the red color. The surprising thing here for me, was the color quality was getting a TLCI of up to 99 in daylight and an SSI of 74, SSI being 80 in tungsten. But there's always a little bit of a green shift. The problem I have with that is that the green and magenta shift doesn't really work all that well on this light, as previously discussed, particularly at the lower intensity levels. You could easily just white balance your camera with a gray card after setting up your light if this was your key light, and the green and magenta shift might not be an issue for you, even less so if you're using several mix panels together. But when you're matching this panel with other lights that you already have, you'll probably need gels to get this fixture to match with your others, which sort of defeats the purpose of owning an RGB WW panel like this one. Now, it might be a non-issue for you, and if you're using this light in a creative capacity for its full color options, then it definitely won't be an issue for you because at that point, the green shift is no longer a consideration. And this light has an insane amount of output compared to what it actually costs. Paired with its superb lightweight build quality, this is an ideal choice for lighting backgrounds and rigging overhead. There's a host of special effects available and for the price, what it offers is pretty interesting. You have a fairly complex configuration of options for things like fire and storm, much more configurable than panels twice the price. I don't use special effects too often though, so I'm going to skip over that and refer to Gaffer and Gear's review. You can find that in the description of this one. My overall feeling of this light is it's a solid budget panel, probably one of the best panels in this price range for backgrounds and washing walls with colors and its creative modes if you're adding it into an existing kit based on what it offers. It might take a little more work to use it as a key light or a fill light if you're matching it with other fixtures or other lights that you already have that have different levels of green or magenta, but if it's your only light, this is a great first investment into lighting. By itself, it will work great as a key light with its very high TLCI and SSI values. On top of that, if you happen to buy any more lights after you've already invested into the mix panel, it can very easily move into another role such as a backlight or a hair light. If you have to take it with you, it's one of the thinnest and the lightest options available at only nine pounds, including the yoke. With that, I just got in the red Komodo, I'm filming on it now, and I'm still learning how to use it. I'll be talking a lot more about that very soon, and I have a huge showdown of all the one by one full color panels that I've reviewed over the past couple years. So if you're into that, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace.